Welcome to Interactive Storytelling. The ethics of interactive storytelling hasn't been addressed at all in the scientific literature, or it's been mentioned only in the passing. When thinking about the ethical dimension, we have to realize that we are focusing on what human beings are doing. We could take now the classification of four partakers that I've used in arranging the material in this course and use it to take a look at each of them from this perspective. We expect the platform to be reliable, to maintain our private information and not to be open for hacking. We should be able to trust that the information we share is treated respectfully and with care. The platform can be compromised by attacks utilizing either technical or social weaknesses. For example, passwords can be stolen by cracking them or pretending to be the administrator and asking for the interactors to give their passwords. Nowadays, these demands on data security are typical for any kind of application. We can extend this to include also the log data and profiles of the interactors. Apart from collecting data from the interactors' decisions, the platform can also record their decisions on advertisements. For example, whether they decide to click or skip it. Although this data isn't related to the actual story, it's a valuable asset for the platform owner in terms of recognizing the most potential advertisers. Moreover, when this data is combined with the log data, the platform owner can try to modify the application to be more advertisement friendly, even to the extent of blurring the demarcation between advertorial and actual content. A special challenge would be profiling, because the interactor is bound to make many choices. A simple example of this is The Walking Dead, which computes the morality of the player after each level. Imagine that this profile would include much more. Even though the choices might not represent the person as such, it could still give a strong indication of their traits, preferences and personality. The ethical problems present in the platform are related to how it's taking away the interactor's control of their resources, such as money, time, attention, social capital, mental and physical energy, and security. When one uses an interactive storytelling application, one is willing to invest these resources. The interactor possibly invests money to use the application, reserves time for experience in the story, uses social capital to invite others to join in the platform, exerts mental and physical energy to progress in the story, and assumes to be secure in the real world while engaged in virtual risks in the story world. As the creator of the story world, the designer has the burden to define its ethical dimension. The designer basically defines what is right and wrong in the context of the created world. Broadly speaking, many of the same ethical considerations that apply to video games also apply to interactive storytelling. It would be possible to imagine how appealing such a story world could be for product placement or advertising. The characters could be harnessed for promoting products or services that are then needed in proceeding. Also, props could be based on real-world products. The line here is vague. It could be argued that this is just a way of for monetization, and as long as it follows the law, it would be on the safe side. A counter-argument would require these connections to be made visible, as it might be hard to differentiate what is promotion and what isn't. There's a short step from here to propaganda. One could easily imagine interactive storytelling as a tool for a subversive political, religious or cultural agenda. Actually, interactive storytelling might make this propaganda even more effective, as it possibly immerses the interactor even deeper in the story world than other forms of digital media. It could be used to confirm already existing stereotypes, racist, misogynous or other prejudices. In this sense, it's closer to social media than video games, as its characters reacting to the interactor and situation can create similar echo chamber effect. Having multiple human interactors could open the door for ethical questions, the obvious one being cheating. Apart from technical cheating, 
This is about what belongs to the agreement the interactors are committed to. Multiple interactors can also bring about cyberbullying and other unethical behavior that riddles, for example, multiplayer games and social media. Preventing this can be hard to realize, but it should be a conscious aim for everyone taking part in the implementation, design and use of in an interactive storytelling application. By large, we can attribute events in the story world to the other three partakers who are obviously humans. Could there be ethical issues that stem from the computer-controlled creations alone? As the systems become more complex, it's possible that there emerges a phenomenon that is ethically questionable. This might seem a highly hypothetical possibility, but we can imagine a scenario where the ethically problematic phenomenon can't be explained away by the intentions of the platform developer, designer or interactor. Could one talk then about the ethics of a computer-controlled character? Could this happen? Would we be able to recognize an abnormal behavior of a character? Yes, we could, but then we would have to frame the question inside the story world. As the character lives there, it doesn't know the existence of a world outside of it, the world of the humans who created it, populated it and participate in it. It doesn't know what its gods are doing. We can only judge it within its own world and hold it responsible there. With this, we are ready to move on to the last video that concludes these lectures. See you there.